Thank you all so much for having me. I'm so excited. Um, thank you, Elian, for that awesome. I feel like I have a hype man, which is very exciting. I've never had that before. Um, this has actually never happened to me before, so I'm a little caught off guard. I, you know, before getting ready for a talk, I'll kind of go to the program, I'll check out what's going on, get a sense of when my time is, who I'm going up against. Um, and so I did that today, or I did that a couple of days ago as I was getting ready. And I'm like, okay, five o'clock, it's like end of the day, kind of chaotic afternoon energy. Um, quick, that's another framework. They're gonna come after me, that's great. I can kind of bounce ideas off of that, that'll be fun. And then I look at the program and who's this alien guy giving the exact same talk that I was planning to give? <laughs> I've never seen that before. Two talks, exact same topic, back to back. Um, I, I didn't know what to do. So I, I reached out to uh, Yoss, who's one of the organizers, who, by the way, the organizers have been phenomenal. Can we give it up for them? This is an unreal, I mean, this is an unreal conference. Um, so I don't think Yoss will mind if I then kind of give him a hard time now, because I reached out to him and I said, hey, this must be an accident, you know, two talks, back to back, let me know, I'm happy to change with anyone, we'll kind of split it up, like I can go another day. And Yoss is like, mm, no, sorry, it's a, it's a packed conference, can't do it. It's like, oh, no, no, it's a three-day conference, I'm sure someone on, on, on Thursday, today's Wednesday, tomorrow's Thursday, um, I can switch with someone on Thursday. It's like, no, sorry, Thursday's view day. Okay, no, well, that, that's fine. Like, Astro and Vue, that's actually a really cool story. We have a really great, like, relationship with them. We can, we can tell that story. He's like, no, no, it's not going to work. It's like, okay, all right, well, what about Friday? Friday, there must be some room. That's Veet day. Like, okay, well, well, you know, we actually have a really great Veet story. We work with them a lot. We're actually powered by Veet internally. Um, one of our maintainers is a Veet maintainer, so that, that's got it. There's got to be some way to kind of tell the story there. No, no can do. So, you guys figure it out. Good luck. Click. That was about, about what the answer was. I, I'm sure you also would tell that story a little differently. But the point is, Ellie and I had to figure out, all right, what are we going to do? Same talk, two people. What's the, what's the deal? So, Ellie's given that talk before. He had it knocked down. He's doing his thing. That's awesome. Um, and so, that kind of leaves me a little free to talk about whatever I want here. And... Creator of Astro, that's not a title. I don't know who wrote that. That's, that's not a title. That's a description of me. That's not a title. So I am truly out to sea here. I have nothing. I'm just a blank slate. Um, yeah, as Elian kind of talked to, but for anyone who's watching online or didn't catch that, um, Astro, if you're not aware, is a framework for building content-focused websites. It's really, really fast, faster than anything from Next to Nuxt. Um, we get to make a ton of trade-offs that they can't because we're really focused on that content story. And so it's this really cool architecture called Islands Architecture. You should definitely check it out. Um, a couple of highlights. We were number one in developer interest and satisfaction in the state of JS uh, survey. Very exciting. Um, we were the number one developer tool on the StackShare's top developer tool list of 2022. We somehow beat out ChatGPT, which I don't think is right, but my mom was very proud, so I guess I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> Even she knew what that meant. <laughs> Um, and we just had an Astro 2.0 release, which had a ton of cool features around content collections, working with Markdown and type safety, um, hybrid rendering and SSR. So it's been a really, really fun year for the project, seeing it grow and mature. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. But I don't have to talk about any of that. I have a totally blank slate. I'm just going to go off, do whatever I want. So I was kind of figuring out what I should talk about, and I realized as I was working on my talk, I had weeks of built-up hot takes, all right? Weeks of Twitter drama that I have not had the opportunity to comment on. Y'all have been crazy. I don't know if there's something in the water, but Twitter has been a mess and I have not commented on any of it. So strap in, we got some takes, all right? Git merge versus Git rebase. <laughs> I can't see any of you, so I'm gonna need like a show of noise. Who's team Git merge? <laughs> all right, Git rebase, team Git rebase. Wow. All right. Team, it's a nuanced topic that you can't boil down into a yes or no. All right. These are Twitter takes. You're wrong. There's a right answer, and it's Git Rebase. <laughs> Git Merge makes me feel dumb. I don't know how to use it. If you're telling me that you're going to get 100 commits over here and 100 commits over there and somehow zipper them together, I don't believe you. I can't do it, and I'm blaming the tool. It's not my fault. It's Git's fault. <laughs> Git Rebase is the right answer. All right. Explicit types and inferred types. This was a huge like TypeScript Twitter drama of the last couple of days. Who's explicit return types? Being really explicit, typing them. 
All right, I kind of subdued the TypeScript community. It's a little quiet. Um, inferring your types in TypeScript. Okay, you're wrong. It's explicit types. It's the only right answer. I don't care. Every thought leader came out saying inferring your types is the only correct thing. No, it's explicit types. I will argue this. It's a hill I'll die on. Um, every time I do a return in TypeScript that doesn't match the return type, I find out about it somewhere else. I do that all the time. Again, I don't trust my own code. So for that reason, explicit types catches this bug for me. All the contrived examples where you can like lie to TypeScript, I don't care. That's, that's the thing I care about. It's Twitter, so there's no nuance. I'm right, you're wrong. That's Twitter. <laughs> all right. <laughs> We have to cover it. We have to cover it. Um, I'm not even going to ask. I'm just going to say, if you, like, if you like Tailwind, use Tailwind. If you don't like it, don't use it. There's, you don't need to. That's it. Just let people use what they want. Just let them be happy. Um, obviously, it's Twitter, so you're not allowed to do that. But that's my hot take. Um, if you like it, that's great. I think I would add one requirement, which is if you're going to make fun of Tailwind, and there's a lot to make fun of, don't get me wrong, you also have to include information about what your favorite thing is. Because this is, I think, what's wrong with the discussion, is that there is no such thing as a good styling system. They're all, in some way, bad. Like, you're trying to take the infinite possible visual art of the world and uh, like, distill it down across any view viewport, any device size, anything you can create online, and you're trying to distill that down into like code is a like inherently flawed endeavor. And Tailwind, whatever, like BEM, your like, CSS modules, they're all bad. I think they're all bad, and we're all just trying to find out what's the best for us. So there you go. That's my, that's my hot take. They're all bad. Use whatever you want. <laughs> um, my last hot take will take a little bit more time, so we got some time for this last one. If I did write my own talk title, which, again, I wasn't able to. The talk's not called Creator of Astro. Um, if I did write my own talk title, it would have been this, which is a really interesting trend, and I'm seeing more and more about it, and it's something I really care about. Um, so this is something I want to talk about. Um, I want to talk through what does type safety mean? Am I talking about TypeScript? Am I talking about something else? Um, this is a trend that I think is going to have a huge impact over the next couple of years. And I think there's things that you can do today in your own work to start to take advantage of what this means for a better developer experience, for being more productive, um, for catching bugs easier. Um, this idea of type safety is very much somewhere between on its way and here. And so I want to talk about what this means for development. Um, this title is a riff on this old saying, which is JavaScript is eating the world. If you tweeted this in 2013, you were super cool. Like, this is like the most punk rock thing you could be talking about in 2013. Because um, we take for granted that JavaScript is kind of everywhere now, but at the time, it was like kind of controversial to say that you could like run JavaScript on the server. Um, so funny enough, at my old job, my, one of my very first jobs, um, we were on the team that was trying to bring Node to a like pretty enterprise, kind of growing software company. Um, just by total coincidence, by the way, my manager is somewhere in the audience. So my manager from 10 years ago, hi, great to see you again. It's been a while. Um, it was such a controversial idea to bring Node into this enterprise that they almost forced, uh, literally forced us all to learn Scala as front-end developers. Because JavaScript, like, the idea of shipping Node in production was that scary. They'd rather retrain 20 to 30 developers who'd only ever worked in HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, Scala. That was how scared people were of Node and JavaScript. Um, we luckily didn't have to do that. But I think it really speaks to just how kind of we take this for granted that JavaScript is a serious language now. Um, we're at, like, this beautiful venue talking about JavaScript. Like, 10 years ago, it would have been, like, a hut by the river, and, like, we would have all brought our own snacks. Like, this is very different from when I was getting started in web development. And I know this isn't one-to-one. -one. Like, NPM is kind of its own thing. But I think it just speaks to the idea that NPM, JavaScript, Node, it's all still growing. And if anything, it's kind of accelerating. All right, so JavaScript seeing the world, that was kind of the hot take of 2013. TypeScript seeing the world, that must, that's kind of, like, the phase two of this. Um, you know, this one is one of those things that's, I think, secretly kind of been going on and all of a sudden is becoming very obvious. Um, in that same state of JS survey, developers are actually, the majority of developers are using TypeScript. They're either entirely in TypeScript or, like, almost entirely in TypeScript. Um, this is a survey, how do you divide your time between JavaScript and TypeScript? Um, yeah, this is kind of a startling answer. I don't know, this startled me at least. Um, I knew it was popular. I didn't realize it was this popular. Only one in 10 developers, essentially, is working only in JavaScript, not touching any TypeScript. The rest, somewhere on the spectrum of using TypeScript. Um, this is something that's, I think, really interesting, because a lot of the kind of popular tools of today weren't designed for this reality. 
um, or even worse, like weren't designed for the future where this accelerates. Um, this is actually one of the things about Astro that I find really interesting because we're a part of this kind of newer breed of frameworks designed for this future. Um, it's one of the actually interesting things. We kind of get to like see where the puck is going and try and skate there a bit, which is that Astro is 100% TypeScript. You can't turn TypeScript off in Astro. Um, you might have seen that question in Elian's demo where we walk you through kind of do you want to write TypeScript? You still have the option not to write TypeScript, but like we're going to be running TypeScript anyway. It's kind of the, the trick of TypeScript is that it's a superset of JavaScript. So if you want to, you can keep writing JavaScript, but it's still TypeScript. Like we're still doing the work behind the scenes to use TypeScript even if you don't want to. Um, I think that's really interesting because I think it unlocks like, I don't know, I've tried to bring TypeScript into other for projects, other kind of components. And it's one of the nice things about Astro is we kind of like, it's, it's, if you look back at that data, that's, it's becoming more of the norm and less of the like, oh, maybe if you go through these extra 10 steps. So that's something I'm really excited about. Again, you don't have to use it, but it's there for the people who want it without a lot of extra steps. All right, that's the context. Here's the hot take. So type safety is in the world. How is that different from TypeScript? Um, first, I want to just kind of quickly show, if you're not familiar, JavaScript and then TypeScript. So TypeScript is this idea of adding a type to something so that you now get kind of information about. So if you kind of look at foo, you're going to see that it is a user with a, a name. Um, this is where TypeScript actually kind of falls apart here. So you can see here that we're making a fetch call, and we're telling TypeScript that its type that we're going to get back is user. It has a name. So we're saying it has a name. That's all you need to know. That's what we tell TypeScript. And TypeScript's happy. The problem is that this fetch call is going over a network. So all of a sudden, we're actually leaving our code base, and a lot of things can happen. Like TypeScript kind of just throws up its hand and says, you tell me what this is. And the problem there is that we don't really know that we're getting this thing back, right? We could get back a 404. We could get back a totally different object. Name could have been replaced by first name and last name. Um, the network could be down. The client could be down. Um, anything could fail along that whole thing. Like, you've lost a lot of the type safety that comes with TypeScript. Um, the way I'd say it is that TypeScript is only as powerful as the types that you give it and the types that it can see. But the second you're kind of leaving the world that you've created of TypeScript, you're kind of on your own. And the problem, the only reason this is really a problem over what you have today is TypeScript makes you feel like you have full type safety. But in reality, you're kind of just trusting that your types, which you're manually maintaining, no guarantees, you're trusting that these are actually accurate. And that's not always the case. So anytime you go across a boundary, anytime you leave your code base, that could also be libraries and frameworks. Um, another example, which I actually luckily was just chatting with Chance from the Remix team. This is not an accurate reflection of Remix today. This actually illustrates my point is they've moved from this to this kind of more inferred world of, of automating this. So it's actually kind of the perfect point. I don't have to drag Remix. They've kind of fixed this. But if you look at this right now, this is a lot of kind of TypeScript, but I wouldn't really argue that it's a lot of type safety, or at least there's a lot of room for human error, it's a lot of boilerplate, and it's still on you to maintain all this code yourself. So for example, you've manually defined the loader data that uh, Re Remix is going to give you with your return type, your get user, your get env. You've got the loader function, which you've now also typed. Um, you've given it this kind of loader function, const loader type. Um, and then you've had to pass that data from the first one all the way down here into the JSON just to properly type it. Um, so again, this is no longer the way it works now, but this is a good illustration of like, this is where they started with TypeScript, which is that you have to like, go through these extra steps. Um, that again, is really dependent on you telling TypeScript the truth. And anytime a human is involved in that story, there's a lot of opportunity for lying, incorrectness, maintenance, kind of things get out of date. Legacy code can really kind of mess up your day. Um, so this is when I talk about type safety. I'm not saying TypeScript, because I think TypeScript's already here. I think it's this idea of automating more type safety, guaranteeing more type safety, and doing it in a way that's really, really invisible to the end user. Um, and finally, can we kind of cross that final end-to-end -end step of that relationship? Can we actually give you type safety reaching out of the TypeScript code base, not necessarily just inside the island you've created? Um, this is one of my favorite features that we've ever launched. We launched it in the 2.0 release, and it was type safety for Markdown. So we really wanted to kind of try this out. It was the idea of if anyone's ever managed a project with like 20 plus Markdown files, you know how tough it can be. Like all that front matter can just be really, really tough to maintain, right? This property is out of date. This one, you copy paste to create a new file often, so you're kind of bringing a lot of garbage basically at the end of the day. It's really hard to maintain large Markdown collections. And so what we wanted to do was actually bring this idea of type safety into Astro for working with Markdown, but also guarantee it, give actual end-to-end -end guarantees about type safety. So you're not lying to TypeScript. You're not having to come up with a representation of the truth. It's actually literally just the truth. 
Um, the two way we did that, um, one is a schema, which is actually going to verify the content. So let's say you have a bunch of blog posts, they have a title, description, all this cool stuff. We will actually go and run this across your whole content directory. So all that markdown is actually going to get verified that it matches. So anything that's out of date is actually going to be caught versus if you've ever had that bug where like somewhere in the template you're referencing a property that's not defined, you get a undefined is not resolved, and you end up tracing it down for an hour into a different part of the code base. This is actually going to give you this really nice error at the actual post saying, hey, here's the problem, the title's missing, go at it, we're good to go. So you get this really nice content flow for verifying your markdown, verifying your, type, um, your typed front matter. And then the other thing you get then is also on the access side, you actually get type safe access to your data. So let's see, hopefully this video works. Yeah, so working with a post that you've gotten back from this markdown now, you're actually getting that same uh, front matter, but instead of like an any object, um, instead of not knowing what your front matter is actually going to be, um, you're actually getting the raw, like guaranteed type of that data. So you can see all your properties, you can kind of auto-complete them, you can verify them, and you actually get the guarantee that it's there versus you telling us, you know, telling Astro it's there, but not really having a way to verify. So this is that end-to-end -end story that's really, really powerful. Um, this is really, really new to Astro. I think we're the first framework to ever really double down on Markdown this much. And I'm really excited with this result because, like, I don't think I've seen this anywhere else. I will shout out, Prisma has been doing this for way longer. So, like, we don't get the credit for, like, TypeScript. Like, that's not what I'm saying. Prisma has been doing this with databases for forever. Um, the idea of, like, you can actually create a schema that defines your database, and then we're going to generate, auto-generate a database client for you automatically. That's really powerful. They've been doing this for way longer than it's been cool. Um, so shout out to them. The other kind of credit where credit's due is Zod. So Zod is this kind of like magic engine that's really, I think, responsible for a lot of this innovation over the last year. Um, you've actually already seen Zod in this presentation. If you go back to this example, um, here is Zod actually powering the schema. So that's z.object z.string, z.boolean, that's Zod. So Zod is actually what's responsible for the guarantee. It's giving us the guarantee of a schema that will bring runtime checks to TypeScript, but also the types that get automatically generated from it. That's what kind of fills the circular. So we're relying on that a ton. Like, again, Zod gets all the credit here. We've just hooked it up in an interesting way. If you want to take this idea even further, there's a TRPC. Um, so if you haven't tried this out yet, it's really cool. It's for building APIs using type safety across the boundary. So again, you're getting a guarantee of the type going in and the type going out of any API query. Um, I just grabbed this video from the homepage. It's a, it's a lot, um, but the important part is down at the bottom. You're going to see it's going to play, and it's going to show you what happens when you actually refactor this, when you rename a property. You immediately get type errors um, across your project, both on the server. You can see one down there. We're going to fix that. And then on the client, go and fix that. Like, that's exactly what TypeScript is terrible at, is that you actually make a change on the server and then no one bothers to update the return type on the front end, you're gonna have a bad time. So this automated, guaranteed, verified, end-to-end -end type safety is, I think, what really is, is coming. Like, I, it's undeniable how powerful this is. Um, people can choose not to use it, that's great. Again, use what you like, but I think this is something that is only now being seen as viable because it's so new. And I think if you look at the progress over the last year, this kind of stuff is happening more and more. It's really coming. I will say, it doesn't mean that you like, have to go Greenfield, start a new project. Like, I hate when the thing is like, oh, you have to throw everything out. We actually use this on another project, which is the idea of bringing open AI types. So if you've ever worked with a REST, data, or sorry, REST API, open AI is a way to actually kind of create a schema. You can generate TypeScript tapes. It's pretty close to actually this experience. You actually get the guaranteed from the schema across both the back end and the TypeScript types on the front end. I will also call it Next.js. They're doing some really wild stuff with uh, TypeScript. So I don't know if anyone saw this video. I'm actually just going to let it play while I drink some water. Hopefully this buys me some time. So you're going to notice here, no one is actually writing TypeScript here. This is all JavaScript so far. But this is actually getting you full docs, full information, full guarantees. If you do something that isn't actually documented and correct, it's going to yell at you. You don't have to go to the doc site to find out why. This is really, really powerful, because this is actually bringing all this information into your editor without you actually having to write any TypeScript yourself. This is all just essentially JavaScript. And so this is why I think this is so powerful, why it's not just like, oh, this will be a thing that like, TypeScript people enjoy, is that you actually don't have to write TypeScript to use this. 
Again, Astro lets you write JavaScript, but we're running TypeScript anyway. That's, that's one thing, but VS Code has really gotten powerful. VS Code is really trying to push TypeScript, which means pushing TypeScript information into JavaScript apps. So even if you're not writing TypeScript yourself, you get a lot of this cool information. The future is type safe. It's super powerful. It helps you catch errors. It helps you be more productive. It helps improve your DX. Again, if we think of TypeScript as the way to express types, like it is the language of types. But I think we're only now just starting to see the actual power that comes from having that language at your disposal. What can you actually do? How can we push that to the absolute limit? Um, I think that's the difference between, if we can call these phases, the phase two and the phase three. We had JavaScript, we have TypeScript, and now I think this is gonna be the next like, kind of way that we improve, the next way that we focus on libraries, uh, improving the sorts of things in our frameworks. It's kind of the interesting thing about this is that this isn't actually necessarily something that any one developer needs to, you know, again, throw out their code and learn. This is actually more of a kind of responsibility of the tools and the frameworks and the libraries to update. So the nice thing about this is this can actually happen, A, pretty quickly, because um, it's not about getting a lot of people, it's about getting a very small group of libraries out. And also, B, it kind of happens much more organically. Someone can try something out. If people like it, they use it. If people don't like it, it kind of goes into the history books. And from that, we get more and more innovation across this new way of just like thinking of type safety as automated, invisible, end-to-end, -end, guaranteed, verified, all that good stuff. So this has been hot Twitter takes plus one very deep dive. Um, but if you liked any of this, check out these projects. They're all doing really interesting stuff with uh, type safety, TypeScript, and just all deserve really cool shout outs. Um, Astro 2.0, go check it out at the website astro.build. We're astro.build on Twitter. And uh, again, thank you to Elian for giving that awesome uh, Astro kind of overview so I didn't have to. Thank you very much.